my friends and I, who I will be referring to as Abigail, Elliot, Sam, and Derek if necessary, have been getting into paranormal investigations over the past few years. We're not professionals by any means, nor do we claim to be. It's just something we enjoy doing whenever we're all able to get together. We've gone to a few supposedly haunted locations and done some investigations, but nothing prepared us for what we experienced in this story. So one day, we were discussing where we should go for our next paranormal investigation. We had just finished another one a couple of nights prior, so we were still feeling pretty brave from that. As we were discussing, one of our friends suggested that we should check out this old abandoned school in rural Tennessee. We had heard stories about this school from videos on YouTube and just from online searches. If you know the story about the boy who was bullied to death and buried under the floorboards, then you'll know what story I'm referring to. If you don't know the story, then I'll give you a brief summary. A young boy was cornered in the boy's bathroom at this school by a bully. The bully beat him up so badly that he ended up succumbing to his injuries and died on the spot. The bully, in a panic, realizing what he had just done, decided to pull up some of the floorboards with his pocket knife and stash the body underneath them. Because of how brutal it was, something very dark and malevolent is set to haunt the school, as well as the boy. Some even speculate that this dark spirit is what drove the bully to take it so far and kill the bully. Now back to the story. Sadly, our friend Abigail wasn't able to come with us on this investigation. So I invited another friend of mine, who I will refer to as Harry. Harry wasn't really into the paranormal like the rest of us are, but agreed to come anyways, just to hang out and have something to do. So we all got into our cars and drove to the school, hoping to have some paranormal experiences and maybe even capture some paranormal evidence that we could show off online. When we got to the school, we quickly realized that the pictures and videos that we had seen online did not do the real thing justice. It was creepy. The entire place was covered in shrubbery, vines, and graffiti. The windows had been busted out, and the doors were off their hinges, presumably from all the local kids looking to get a rush by breaking into and exploring a creepy abandoned school. We walked around the school and eventually found the entrance to the basement, which apparently you are not supposed to go into, especially the boiler room. Not just because the whole building was on the brink of collapse, but also because that's where it primarily lives. So of course that's one of the first places we wanted to go. We walked around the basement and did some exploring, just to survey the area and to get a better idea of where we wanted to begin our investigation. We eventually did find the boiler room, and at first glance, it didn't seem like anything special. Just some broken down equipment, graffitied walls, trash thrown all over the place, and a random school chair sitting in the corner. Elliot laughed and made the comment, must not be a very powerful spirit if this is where it has to live. We all let out a little chuckle in agreement and continued on our way through the basement. Thinking back now, that may not have been the best comment to make about this thing and its home. We exited the basement and went into the main area of the school. The main area wasn't any better than the basement. Graffiti and trash were everywhere. The ceiling was falling in and the floor was collapsing in some areas. We explored the halls, some classrooms, the gym, and we even found the bathroom where the bullied boy was supposedly buried underneath the floorboards. After exploring for a little while longer, we decided to start our investigation. We set up a couple of cameras, motion sensor lights, and voice recorders in some of the classrooms, the hall, and the bathroom. As we were conducting our investigation, three of us were in one of the classrooms, while myself and Harry were in the hall right outside. The three of us that were in the classroom were playing around with some dowsing rods and a spirit box. If you don't know what dowsing rods are, 
They are basically two copper rods that can spin freely, and they are used as a way for spirits to communicate with you, either by crossing the rods or pointing. The spirit box is a device that quickly cycles through radio waves and allows spirits to talk through the frequencies. As they were asking their questions in the classroom, Harry and myself were staring down the hall. At the end of this hall is what we assumed was a staircase, but we couldn't be too sure because we couldn't reach that area due to the floor having collapsed. As the two of us were looking down this hall, we heard a loud bang come from the far end where the staircase was. We quickly shined our lights in the direction of the noise, but we didn't see anything. We kept watching for a minute, just in case something or someone came out. But after a couple of minutes of nothing, we just assumed it was an animal or something. Eventually, I made my way into the classroom with the others while Harry stayed in the hall. As we are asking our questions and hoping for a response through the dowsing rot or the spirit box, I noticed Harry in the hall. He was ghostly white and fixated on the area where we had heard that noise before. I asked him, what's wrong? To which he says, I don't want to freak you guys out, but I swear I just saw someone poke their head out from around the corner and look right at me. We were all like, oh, it's probably just your mind playing tricks on you, but he was still very insistent on what he'd seen. Now, we had seen and heard things during our investigations before, but something about the way Harry looked had us all a little spooked. Harry insisted that we should move on to another area, so we obliged him and went back to the main foyer where we had entered. We were standing there talking about where we should go next when we heard what sounded like a child's laugh coming from the classroom where we had just been. We all instinctively shut up and froze in place. Finally, our friend Sam broke the silence. What? was that? Eventually, Elliot built up the courage to go see what it was. He started making his way back to the classroom when something told me that it wasn't safe for him to go back in there. I quickly grabbed his arm and said, I don't think that's a good idea, to which he brushed off and proceeded to head towards the classroom. A split second later, we heard a loud crunch and a crash come from the room so we all ran to see what it was. When we reached the classroom, we were horrified to see that the floor had collapsed right where we had been standing moments earlier. Had something not told me that it wasn't safe, I wouldn't have grabbed Elliot's arm, and he probably would be at the bottom of the school right now. If not dead, then very hurt. As we stood there, in shock of what had happened, we began to feel very grateful that the floor hadn't collapsed while we were all standing in there. We decided that that was enough of the classrooms, and we made our way into the gym. The floors felt much safer in there. We continued our investigation, and thinking back now, we should have left after our friend almost died. But we were dumb and wanted to go on. I took the dowsing rods and began asking those generic questions. Is anyone there? Can you tell us your name? Etc. Eventually, I asked the question, Can you point to where you are? And to my surprise, the rods pointed in the direction of the dark corner of the gym. Guys, come here! I shouted to my friends. I'm getting responses. As my friends came closer, the rods began to move as well. Now they weren't pointing in the corner anymore. They were following Elliot. Now might be a good time to mention that this is the same guy who almost fell through the floor and the guy who made the sly comment in the basement about this thing's home. I'm not saying that he was being targeted by this thing, but it sure seemed like it at this point. No matter where he moved, the rods followed him. He went left, they followed. He went right, they followed. He ran around me, they followed full circle. 
This creeped us out beyond belief, so we wanted to know why the rods were following him. As we asked our questions as to why the rods were following him, someone eventually asked, Are you mad at him? Then, in an instant, the rods went straight and unnaturally still, and the room fell quiet. So quiet, in fact, that it was as if we had all fell deaf instantaneously. I got this insanely bad feeling as if something very evil had just entered the room. A few seconds later, I felt something strong physically grab the ends of the rods in my hands. Whatever was grabbing them began thrashing them back and forth with enough force to move my whole body as if they were trying to break them from my grip. As this was happening, noises started coming from all around the school. It sounded like doors and lockers slamming, things being thrown down the halls and all around us, and screaming. Though admittedly, the screaming may have been coming from us, it didn't help our situation by any means. We were all terrified. We had never experienced anything like this before. Then, Harry, the same guy who saw the thing at the end of the hall, pointed in the direction of the dark corner of the gym and let out a guttural, blood-curdling scream. We didn't even bother to look and see what he was pointing and screaming at. The only thing in our mind at this point was, Get. Out. Now. We all quickly grabbed our things and sprinted out of the school, back to our cars. We got in and peeled out of there as fast as we could. We met back up at my place, still obviously shaken up by what had just happened. After taking a while to process this experience and decompress, we asked Harry what he had seen. He told us that as everything was going on, he looked into the corner of the gym and saw something horrifying. He described seeing a massive thing, probably seven feet tall, standing in the corner. It had unnaturally long arms that were spread out wide. Its head had long, devilish horns, and its mouth was open so wide that you could probably fit your head into it. He said on top of that, though, on its unusually large mouth was a smile more evil than you could possibly ever imagine. Knowing that something like that was so close to us was bone chilling. In my opinion, we were lucky to make it out alive. We've never returned to that school and have no intention of ever going back. As far as we're concerned, if that old school was demolished and the rubble was burned, they'd be doing the world a favor. Maybe it would destroy or at the very least trap whatever that thing was in there for good. If you know the school, I highly suggest that you never go inside or even go onto the property. Save yourself the possible trauma. Believe what you want, but that night will forever be burned into our minds and haunt us in our nightmares.